Kala and I study the master program Applied Entrepreneurship at the University of Applied Sciences and Arts Ostwestfalen-Lippe. And when it comes to digitalization and Industry 4.0, the conversation often also includes the lack of skilled workers and the work ethics of the younger generations. But that talk most often is about the generations Y and Z instead of with them. I was born in 1996 and I identify as a millennial. Although I cannot speak for my entire generation, I might be able to give some insights based on anecdotal evidence and conversations I had with my peers, but also from the project I work at Bildungsbrücken OVL, where we try to create a better framework for the excellent work-based learning of the future and where we get to talk to a lot of apprentices and their instructors. Therefore, I would like to present three theses. Firstly, digitalization is not a challenge of the future. Secondly, money does not create wealth. And lastly, we need to talk. So let's start with the term digitalization itself. A very broad elementary school level definition of it might read, it's turning an analog thing into the digital version of it. You don't need to agree 100% on that. The point I want to make is just that we are describing a process here. And naming it like that makes sense, especially if you were there and knew the world before that process took place and witnessed the beginning of it, just as a majority of the older generations did. However, for the younger people around, this does not ring true anymore. By the time we gained consciousness, myself included, but especially the people born in this millennium, digitalization has already been taking place. Parents were sitting at the breakfast table, checking the weather for the family trip later that day on their smartphones. And we were playing with Game Boys that reacted to touch and physical motion. And when we entered school, we soon learned how to design fancy rainbow fonts in Microsoft Word. For us, digitalization has always been part of our lives. And it's nothing new. Actually, we've heard politicians and visionaries ponder about that topic for as long as we can remember. And it feels strange that something that has been around since we were toddlers is still described as this big challenge of the future. Which future are we talking about here exactly? The future of 20 years ago? Because it cannot be today's future if it has existed for so long. For us, we grew up in a world that is constantly changing according to technology, that is evolving from technology to technology. And if people are treating digitalization as a challenge of the future still, are they just postponing the task of finally dealing with it? The debate has evolved into those buzzword technologies like artificial intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality, industry 4.0, because those are not quite achievable yet, at least not for the majority of companies and people. Focusing the discussion on them allows the average Joe to disengage from digitalization. After all, what does he have to do with it? He can't afford to implement that. He does not have the power or time or resources to deal with these abstract concepts. And so he does not take action right now and overlooks the opportunities that digitalization has to offer right now. In boosting efficiency in everyday communications, in letting machines carry out those repetitive tasks that bore employees out of their minds, or by becoming one of those new age employers who actually attract those skilled workers everybody is so desperately looking for right now. Digitalization has been around as long as we have, and we were promised that it would make our everybody's lives better. So let's not wait for that to happen any longer. Let's instead evaluate which basic parts of digitalization can be implemented right now, which actions need to be taken, which trainings might need to be held, because we cannot treat digitalization as this prospect of the future anymore. It has proven to not work as a magic formula that will just work like that. And we are, after all, already living it. We always have been. Now onto the second point I want to make. Money does not create wealth, at least not by our definition of wealth, because to us the most important thing is time. More precisely, time well spent. There is a lot of talk about attention being the new currency and most of the time that is said regarding social media, but why stop there? We are very picky when it comes to the things we devote our time to. 
and a job or work in general is no exception. In my job, we recently visited an Industry 4.0 company and talked to the head of training there and he was a wonderful guy who held a lot of modern and I'd say reasonable opinions. But when it came to time, he proudly announced that he works an hour longer than he is contractually obliged to every single day because he loves his job. Now the apprentices he is in charge of, they are not willing to do that. I guess in my generation's understanding of a work contract, it's that if you sign away 20, 30 or 40 hours of your work to a company, they pay you for your undivided attention during that time. Not less, but not more either. You might still like your work or even love it, but aren't there things you love more than work? I am sure that even that head of training has a family or a hobby or a side project that he loves more than work. Or at least I hope he does. Because we do. We value other parts of life more than our jobs. And I am of course generalizing here again, I'm just pointing out tendencies that I have observed. For example, if my friends start or leave a job, we rarely talk about security and wages and the longevity that they may hold. The questions that matter are, how flexible are your hours? Do you have to drive there every day or can you do home office? And do you spend your time there doing something meaningful? I have seen people my age quitting or refusing to enter well-paid secure jobs to study a second degree or leave to travel the world or to found a startup with their friends. The goal is living a fulfilled life. On the big scale, finding your life purpose and working towards it. And on the small scale, living every day, not only the weekends, in a way that does not make you feel miserable. That is not to say that we cannot identify with our jobs at all or that we are unwilling to practice some sort of work-life integration. It's just that the perks we demand in return differ from the ones that generations before us wanted. And you might argue that we are privileged in those demands, to which I'd answer, yeah, possibly. But if we don't use the digital revolution to our advantage, if we don't strive for a sort of utopia where everybody is contributing to a better life for themselves and everybody else, then what even is the point? Which brings me to my third point. We need to talk <laughs> in our schools and in our universities and maybe most importantly in our workplaces. You might still think of people born in the 2000s as playing with their Barbies and Legos, but they are not. They are your colleagues now. So whether you are a boomer or a zoomer and whether you are a CEO or just starting your career, we won't be able to navigate this digital transformation without talking to each other. We might very well be living through one of the biggest upheavals in human history and we still have the chance to create it instead of surrendering to it. We still have the chance to flatten the curve of turmoil that is coming our way if we are open for a discussion. And that discussion must include questions that seem outrageous to ask, like is a 40-hour work week really still the most efficient way? And do we really have to waste time and emissions on our way to work every day when we manage to make home office work during the pandemic? Or <laughs> smaller things like how many meetings are really necessary to coordinate a project before they become a waste of time? These are some of the burning questions that we would like to ask. However, you might not have heard them yet because it takes courage to ask them. It takes courage to ask questions that might make you seem like the pampered, lazy millennial. Not in a setting like this, in a video that is recorded and then sent into the endless void that is the internet, but in our real life social groups as the youngest person on a team or as the one who has not yet earned the right to demand a conversation. If you ask trainees or students or young professionals alike, they want to participate. They want to be involved and they want their voices to matter. So if you are curious what they have to say or if you want to excite them about the plans that you have and have a little faith that we are not a lost generation, but just a different one, then feel free to initiate a conversation. It might very well be the easiest way to working out solutions to the challenges that we are facing together right now. Mm -hmm.